Welcome to Cat Tutorials, and in this video, I'll be covering practice problem 3.9 from the fourth edition of Fundamentals of Electric Circuits. This video is sponsored by my parents. That's hilarious. Okay, so we are asked to find the using inspection, we are asked to find the mesh equations. So just a recap on the concepts which we'll use to find these equations. We have, we basically want to form a, a matrix, a matrix setup using our Kramer's rule, right? So in the matrix, using Ohm's law, we're going to have V is equal to IR. So basically the format of, we're going to have R, I equals to V basically, right? That is the format that we're going to have in this case. So RKK corresponds to the sum of the resistors in mesh K, right? And RKJ or RJK is a negative of the sum of the resistance, the resistances uh, or the sum of the resistance in common with meshes K and J. So just to illustrate or just to show what I mean by that, let's continue to solve this problem here. So we basically have five meshes, which I have labeled as one, two, up to five. And we're going to use uh, the variable I to show that these are currents and subscripts one, two, five. So starting with uh, the mesh here, the bigger one that has I1. So this is how you treat uh, independent voltage sources. So when you move from, since I said this is the format, since I said this is the format, on this side you're going to have V, right? So when you encounter going around a loop, when you encounter in using inspection, when you encounter the negative first, or when you move from the negative to the positive in your loop, you actually write it as positive opposed to how you would when applying something like KVR, right? So let's continue. Let's continue to find each of the values which are associated with each of the positions in, in the mesh, right? So we're going to start off by finding R11, which is the sum of all the, the resistances in the, the mesh. So starting at the top, we have 50, right? In this match, we have 50, we have 40, we have 80, right? So we're going to say 50 plus 40 plus 80, which gives us, uh, this is, this is uh, 90 plus 80, which is 170. And moving on to R22, in this match, this is the second one. We have 40, 30, and and 10, right? 40, 30, and 10. So 40, 30, and 10. So that is 40, that is 40, which is give us uh, 80 in the end. So moving on to R33, in the third mesh, we have 30 and 20. So we're gonna add 30 and 20, which gives us 50. And in the fourth mesh, we have 80 and 10. So we're going to add 80 and 10, which gives us 90. And in the fifth one, R55, we have 20 and 60, right? So we're going to have 20 plus 60, which is equal to 80. And those are some of the positions or the di diagonals of this uh, matrix, which you're interested in. So I ran out of battery power while thin this or the previous section. That's hilarious. So now it's night time. Let's continue anyway. So these are the values which we have for the sum of the resistances which are in each of the meshes. Now we move on to the other subscripts or the other positions in the matrix. So for the other positions in the matrix, we said JK or KJ is the negative of the sum of the resistors in common with the two meshes K and J. <coughs> so we can start with R, uh, R12, R12, which is also equals to R21. If we look here, we have 40, 
which is common between the second mesh and the first mesh. So I'm going to say negative 40, right? And moving on to, now move on to R13. Let's just write all of them. And then I'm just going to fill them up. So R41, then we have R15, R, um, what's this? Uh, which is equals to R51 equals, equals, equals. Right, moving on to that, which is equals to R32. So we're going to have R24, which is equals to R42. We have R25, which is equals to R52. Then we have R34, which is equals to R43. We have R35 equals to R53. Okay. <clears throat> so between uh, mesh 1 and 3, let's see what we have in common. So this is mesh 1, that is mesh 3. So you basically have 0 because mesh 3 is over there and mesh 1 is over there. There isn't a resistor which they have in common. So that is basically 0. So looking at mesh 1 and 4, 1, 4. So 1, falls over here. So these ones share 80. So since they share 80, it's going to be negative 80 over there. And looking at mesh 1 and 5, they don't share any resistor, so it's going to be 0. Looking at 2 and 3, here's 2 and there is 3. They actually share 30, which is over there. So you're going to say negative 30, right? Moving on to um, what is this? 2 and 4. 2 and 4. Or 4 and 2. So there is 4, there is 2. They actually share 10. So since they share 10, we're going to say negative 10. And we move on to 2 and 5. 2 and 5. Let's see, 2 is over there, 5 is over there. You don't share anything. So it's going to be 0. Moving on to uh, 2 and 4. 2, no, 3 and 4. So 3 and 4 is 3, there's 4, you don't share anything, so that's going to be 0. It's going to be 0. And finally, 3 and 5. There's 3, there's 5, so they actually share 20, which is over there. So we're going to have negative 20. Right. So now let's input these into our matrix. Well, let's write all of this in matrix form. So <coughs> This is the relationship which we have, P is equal to IR. So we're going to have the matrix with the coefficients, which you just formulated now. Uh, then we're going to have all the variables of interest or the mesh variables, which are I. So I1, I2, I3, I4, and finally I5 equals to the voltages or V. Now with the voltages, is what you do when you move from the negative to the positive or when the mesh current encounters the negative first you actually write it as as positive as opposed to what you do when applying kvr so in this case in this first mesh in mesh one you actually move from the negative to the positive or this i1 encounters the negative first so you actually write that as positive 24 positive 24 so you write it up here Moving on to the second mesh, let's see, we do not have any voltage sources in the second mesh, so we can just write zero, we're going to have zero there, then move on to the third mesh, so if we go clockwise, going clockwise, we encounter the positive first, so we actually go from the positive to the negative, so we're going to have negative, so we're going to basically oppose the sign which we have, or the sign which we encounter first, so it's going to be negative 12, and going to the fourth one, we move from going clockwise. We always go clockwise. So we're going to go from the negative to the positive, which will give us, and uh, the value of this is 10 volts, by the way. So the value of this is going to be 10. So positive 10, because it encounters the negative first. So positive 10, that's where we write it. And finally, in the fifth mesh, when we're going clockwise, we encounter, let this focus a bit. Focus. All right. So going clockwise, we encounter the positive of this, say, voltage source first. So we're going to have negative of that voltage source. So it's going to be negative 10. 
and those are your values for the voltage column right now moving on to plug in the values which we have been finding previously so we're going to start with the first row so at position 1 1 we have 170 we have 170 which is over there at position uh, 1 2 at position 1 2 we have negative 40 at position let's see let's see at position 1 3 we have 0 at position um, 1 4 1 4 is over there we have negative 80 negative 80 at position 1 5 we have 0 and that is all for the first row right moving on to the second row at position 2 1 position 2 1 we have negative 40 at position 2 2 position 2 2 we have 80 at position 2 3 position 2 3 we have negative 30 at position 2 4 we have negative 10 at position 2 5 2 5 we have 0 moving on to the third row at position 3 1 we have position 3 1 we have 0 at position 3 2 we have negative 30 at position 3 3 we have 50 at position 3 4 3 4 let's see let's see let's see 3 4 we have 0 at position 3 5 we have negative 20 at position okay moving on to the fourth row at position 4 1 we have negative 80 over there negative 80 at position 4 2 position 4 2 we have negative 10. We have negative 10. At position uh, 3, 4, or 4, 3, we have, where is it, where is it, where is it, 4, 3 is over here. We have 0. At position 4, 4, we have 90. We have 90. And at position 4, 5, we have position 4, 5, where is it? position 4 5 so if you look at 4 and 5 there isn't anything shared so that's basically going to be 0 that is basically going to be 0 right that is 0 now coming to the um, last row or the fifth row at position 5 1 we have 0 at position let's see at position 5 2 position 5 2 we have zero as well. At position uh, five three, position five three, where is it? Position five three, we have negative twenty. Negative twenty, this is zero. At position um five four, position five four, position five four is over where is it? Okay. So looking at five and four, there isn't anything shared, so it's basically zero. And looking at position 5-5, five, five, we have 80. And that is, this is, um, and this is basically how you'd form the equations of this particular circuit. This is your setup of the mesh current using inspection.